Howdy fellas, Frankie Day, back again on YouTube. This evening YouTube, I have uh, two more models I got today at the hobby shop. The name of this video for this for right now is called Two More for the Stash. And uh, I went to the hobby shop today and get some more uh, building supplies. I ran in a couple, couple kits. Uh, these two haven't been out too long in the modeling community. Uh, I think I see one build of it is done it was by a uh, made modeler, I believe, John from across the pond, my, my English buddy. I think he built. I think he's building one right now. And uh, Don down at his hobby shop's got one of these that's built up uh, in display in the, in the model display cabinets for the for the exhibits that where people. Uh, Guys like myself go in there and donate their models like that to a view view when they come in there. It sold me. So, I got two today, and we'll start out with, um, we'll start out with this one right here. This here is, uh, it's 148 scales by Airfix. This is the Glosser uh, Javelin. A beefy model it is, and uh, it retails for uh, $69.99. I got for $59.99, he knocked off another 20 bucks on it, uh, so I got it for almost $40. And uh, happy man. And this is a very big kit, and so it's costly. And uh, I love these nice red boxes Airfix has. It has a uh, infection box. It's got advertisement like Airfix clubs and stuff like that. Anything to get you to do something, buddy. Anything, to, anything to get you to do out there to spend money on stuff, guys. You know, and stuff like that. I'm not too much interested in. If you're a kid, that's great for kids, bud. Even some adults do it too, but. It's not for me. It's just, there's a lot of benefits and tokens there you can get. I guess uh, you get a fair fixed token, you get a kit or something like that. I, I can see you doing that, but a lot of the stuff I'm not too interested in. And I just like to build the model. Okay, uh, we'll start out with the inbox of you. And um, once the box top is uh, opened up, your green is one big colossal, huge baggie full of sprues. I kid you not, fellas, this thing is loaded full of sprues. And, um, <coughs> there's no tape on here like uh, Ravel and uh, Chumper does, but I'm going to cut this off of here and we'll go through your sprues one by one. And, uh, and I get pretty familiar with the kit. This is going to be down the road, guys, when I build this. It's going to be a, possibly a group build. Maybe Mark will start another aircraft in the 1960s again. There's a lot more out there. The 1960 aircraft group build going on, folks. And maybe good old Mark's PD-197, he maybe can get, a, get another group build going with the 60s aircraft. Okay, guys. On the first brew, I took out... Apparently, this looks like it's a fuselage has a bottom. Uh, instead of being joined at the uh, center line of the aircraft, they join in halves only. Like that of my uh, F-100 Super Sabre. You got your, your ordnance, uh, you have uh, 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 you got missiles, auxiliary fuel tanks. Uh, this here is complete set right there. That's your fuselage right there. That's food number two. You gotta bear with me, folks. I'm, this kit's new to me. I'm new to this. I, I'm never too keen on jets. I do like jets, but this one I do like very much. And it's, apparently, this must be the the engine intake, and also the engine itself. I remember John, the uh, made modeler, he was uh, saying something that there's a fit issue with the uh, with the engine on the side of the fuselage. And uh, we'll see when I run into it. And um, this is a very highly detailed kit, 
Airfix needs to be congratulated on this. They've done a very superb job on this. Okay, boys, I'm getting pretty familiar with everything now. At least I'm trying. Okay, folks, this is the wings. This is your bottom section of your wings, your undercarriage. Your undercarriage has got a sub boring bits in there for your, under, for your wheel wells, which actually fits on the, the inside of the wing, and then incorporates the wheel well. And this is your horizontal stabilizers right here on that screw. So that's that screw number three. Okay, folks, here comes screw number four. The top section of the wing, the vertical stabilizer, your tail, your rudder, and here's where your wing slats go at. They probably serve as, as landing flaps. I'm quite sure they do. The Gloucester Javelin is, uh, is a very, very beautiful airplane for its day. I'm not too familiar with the aircraft in general, but one thing about building kits, guys, when you build models, you learn more about the air model once it's built before you ever do before you build it. So there's a good teaching training aid right there they can use as a learning curve. It's education. Okay. Screw number five. Looks like stabilizers right here, folks. I'm quite certain it is. Yes, it is. Here's your stabilizers. Here's your wheel wells. Here's your wheel wells right here. Stabilizers, landing gear covers, and right here it looks like uh, it looks like bulkheads where your that's where your engine fits on top of there. Actually, these bulkheads here. Look at these bulkheads. Looks like to me, this fits on the bottom side of the fuselage, and on, on the bottom half of the fuselage and the and the engines, the afterburners and everything fits right on top of there. Oh wow, that's beautiful. This tire's well. That's after, that's part of your afterburner. Up that was your tires. Had a lot of tread on there, but it's not. That's part of the of the veins of the afterburner. Here's more your undercarriage uh, wheel well doors. Here's more parts of your engine. Ah, uh, screw number six. We got. Uh, Here's your your I don't know what kind of missiles that the English incorporated on. They look almost like that of sidewinders in a way. No, not sidewinders, but, but uh, sparrow missiles. Here's your nose uh, undercarriage. And these right here are probably fins that fit on auxiliary fuel tanks. And here's more of your of your engines halves right here, which fits the engine burner section, fits inside the fuselage. Wow, that's very. And you got these big old sharp little, look like P top tubes or something. Looks like that one kind of snapped a little bit. That's okay, I can fix that with sprue. Okay, screw eight. There's nine, there's ten screws in here, folks. Here's your wing slats. Of these here must be your internal stores bays. Here's your undercarriage, your tires. I fit your undercarriage. Very beautiful kit, guys. This is very beautiful. Screw nine. What devil is that dropped out of here? Noseville door. Exactly that was. Put that in the bag. You don't want to lose that. That's one thing, folks. You got to be very careful. You take parts out of the baggies, man. Parts are get. Parts come off the screws. And they get hung up beside the, the, the sprues and once you take them out parts fall out and sometimes you don't catch them when they fall out and they're lost. You know what happens after that? The carpet monster gets a hold of them you'll never see it again. 
Here's some more of the under wing stores, fuel tanks. You got your instrument panels, undercarriage legs. You got a good, nice little boarding ladder to give you, too, folks. A nice little boarding ladder right here. And this here, I don't have a clue what that is, but I'll soon find out once I get into the construction. It'll be a long while before I tackle this, folks. The only time I'm going to build this is to get a group build going on using jet aircraft. English jet aircraft be a good group build. Okay, guys, on the tent sprue here, you clear parts. Wow, how about that air fix? I'm going to shake your hand. They got all the clear parts instead of a clear vacuum, where it's supposed to be. I like this. Now, this right here, this stuff here, I like it very much. When I start putting clear parts inside bagging, it keeps them getting scratched. The rest of models do not like scratch canopies, anything that's acetate that's clear. We do not like to have them scratched. But like I say, I'll repeat this a third time, folks. You get a scratch on top of your canopy up here like this. You, you get a scratch on your canopy. You get Brasso, a nice good soft rag. Put a little, put a little Brasso in your rag. Or even toothpaste even works. Just rub it in, man. Just keep on rubbing, keep rubbing, keep rubbing. That's and that scratch in that estate canopy would be like Houdini. Gone. Nobody knows but you. Okay, folks. Well, lastly, we'll review the instructions and the decal sheet. Boy, this is a big model. The decal instructions to give you the kit is general, typical airfix instructions. Except these instructions are, are treated a lot more better than the earlier issues that uh, airfix has, has released back in the 50s and 60s. And of course, this is more update kits, state of the art, new millennium. And uh, the history, uh, the construction of this kit is all bilingual. Uh, yeah, part, there's a lot of optional parts you can use in this kit. More Airfix Club stuff. Enough that noise. Okay, guys. Look at the structures right here. You fellas all can see right here. I'm trying to get this thing so y'all can see. We can see it together right here. Okay, once you open the instructions, you got your do's and don'ts and legend codes and options and so forth. And, and uh, your summary instructions are all bilingual right here. On this page here, English, German, Spanish. Okay, as customary as all kits, was built starting with step number one. All the wheel wells have been are, are to be assembled first. The pilot seat has to be in uh, uh, the pilot tub, also the cockpit four, and all the all the dial instrument uh, panels, joystick, uh, all the interior parts have to be assembled first before the fuselage is closed up. So you guys get a pretty uh, idea. I was right. That uh, bulkhead right there, where the engines fit in place, that's what fits right here, fellas. You can see what I mean. Now, I think this assembly right here, what John had a problem on. He says, uh, once that fits in there like that, it, it, it don't want to fit too good. So, if, if, it, if it was in some kind of fit issue, you're just going to have to trim the fit. No matter what company makes a model, no part, no, no kit is, is blemish free. I don't care who they are. You're going to find a mistake, you're going to find a fit issue somewhere. You gotta work around those things, fellas. You gotta think as you build, but don't think too hard. Okay, guys, you got the other assembly procedures of the kit itself. Has stencil locations where they go. On the back of the instructions, gives you two options. 
This aircraft painted X dark sea gray with dark sea green on top. Under surfaces are silver. I figured they're sky or light gray. I can do some research. I'm not quite sure it's silver. That's first option. Option number two. Here's option number one, showing the sea gray and dark green on there with the silver undersurfaces. Option number two, aircraft is completely, totally painted aluminum silver. Only thing that's painted outside aluminum silver is a ray dome, fits across the nose, and also anti glare panel that fits in front of the, ca the canopy. That's it with instructions, gang. Now this is one colossal decal sheet. This sheet decal sheet is almost as big as the box. Here's the decal sheet, guys. I give you. There's probably options in here, and whatever uh, variant you want to be able to fit, uh, paint finish this model. They've got a lot of. Uh, what am I doing here? My apologies, guys. I had the back of paper on there. That stuke is getting to me. Here we go, boys. Here's all the decals here. Here's the options. And right here is probably the options of your license and registration number of the aircraft itself. So they give you two variants. These decals are big. And uh, their quality seems like it's pretty decent to me. Very much on the thick side. Good old uh, Walther's uh, decal solvents will uh, will thin those down right to paint. It'd be no problem there, fellas. Okay, guys, we'll put the sprues back in here. After I finish this video, put it back in the baggie. And uh, we'll go to what the other one I'm going to do. I like to be able to show you, fe you fine fellas out there. Okay, guys. Okay, guys, this is a new one. This, this is made in Ukraine. It's uh, bilingual. It's Russian, English, Spanish, and probably another nationality, which I'm not too certain of. This is the 148 scale Dornier 215B-4 uh, bomber. This is a new one by this company. I never, I never heard of this company before. It's called ICM. Squadron uh, models out of Crawley, Texas, are the distributors of this uh, this kit. Now, this is a very excellent kit. I'll open the box, look at the parts. I'll look at the instructions while I go because I was kind of curious of how it is. What it sold me is when I, when, I, when I saw this at the hobby shop, I turned the box around. And it's like dragon and trumpeter. They give you these. There we go, fellas. I'm sorry, I had it upside down. These test shots of the model. As you can see, the complexity of the detail of this thing incorporated in this kit. For a model that's made across the pond, this, this is excellent. I mean, the, the Ukraine, this, the Ukraine, uh, the uh, part of the of Russia, they, uh, they really did a good job with this Dornier. It's got the Denmark Benz engine, it's got the earlier engines than the, uh, the radio type they used. I think the radio types they used, I think uh, there were Yumo engines they used. They went from Delmore Benz all the way to uh, Yumo engines. Like that in Stuka. And it's a very detailed model, and it's big. It's about the size of the, of the Monogram B25, 148 scale. Once it's done, I compared wingspans with my uh, Monogram B25. Okay, folks. Once the box is open, get greeted with a. A glossy, beautiful instruction. Well, these instructions right here, they're in English. USSR. That's it. And here's all your your, your, your color color call outs right here, folks.
Okay, once the instructions have been opened, here's all your parts list of your sprues and everything. Sorry about using this webcam, folks. A lot more faster use this webcam and then box reviews than use the other camera I got. And uh, plus, I'm getting tired. It takes a long time for it to load up and everything. And uh, with webcam on my computer, it loads up in a snap. Okay, guys, there's more construction sequences of the fuselage there. And uh, as you can see, very beautiful. It's almost pictorial in a way, too. And it goes on and on. It's got a very detailed Bombay. Once the model's done, it looks like this when it's finished. Very beautiful. Turn it over the back. You get your paint schedule. You got two variants. You have one that's painted hollow bell on the other side. Duck and run. And a short screen on top for this variant right here. The other variant. Shows paint schedule. Duck and growl, Schwartz Green, Schwartz Grun, and also uh, Hollow Brow with, uh, with gray on the bottom. It's kind of like a, a modeled finish on here on the bottom, on the bottom surfaces. It's really modeled in there, folks. Right underneath the undersurface of the wing, it's all, all kinds of models. I've seen that fuselage on the 88s. I mean, that kind of camo they use. So other than that, I complete the instructions so you, you guys get the picture. Here are the decals I give you. No swatsikas. I was hoping they give you some swatsikas. I sure can use some swatsikas, fellas. i tell you one thing. You know, you got to be somewhere where I can get those at. I'm like Alex. I love my swatsikas. As I, I cannot stress this any more further. Uh, for anybody out there, I mean, uh, not us. It's just, it's just people, a lot of people in general don't like the swatsikas because uh, of the of the past, but like I say, it's it's history. I mean, no German airplane looks good without Swastika. That's part of the aircraft itself. I mean, it's like it's like I said previously. It's like it's like a Spitfire without without the roundels, without the camo. It don't look like a Spitfire. And a B twist B seventeen don't look like a B seventeen without olive drab, neutral gray in the bottom, no Victor girl side of the fuselage, and no squadron colors. If, if you just had a bland old B seventeen with no no, it, it just it didn't look right. So actually, it's for uh, it's more or less as visual purposes only to to uh, to impose a more or less detail in the history of the aircraft itself. So it looks like a Swiss right there to give you. These are all 1940. But I'll tell you one thing, uh, I'll build those kits someday. Get a, I wish I'd known that. I can use this for that German. Uh, uh, the Panzer, Steyrie Panzer's German Bomber Group, build group. So I got my 88 in there, so I'll, I'll start that next week. Should have my Stuka done tomorrow. And when I get some Stuka done, I'll just go ahead and start on the, my Skytrain and my Winnie Mae. Do those back to back and get them out of the way. And I'll probably have a video tomorrow, too, of Chancellor of North Wales, a uh, uh, flying boat group that has got going on. It's been going strong since the first of this month. And uh, so far, we'll get uh, Mick across the pond. He's got a beautiful uh, Ravel of Germany, 172nd scale Arado float plane. He's doing a marvelous job on that. Very superb. Good job there. Good job there, Mick. It's probably painted by now. <clears throat> and uh, as my group build, we got uh, Farron Adams. He uh, He's doing uh, the Ravel of Germany, 132nd scale, Messerschmitt G10. And uh, he's doing a very, very fabulous job on that. Uh, he made a video previously of it, and probably a lot of you fellas commented on it. I did too. Okay, guys, uh, once, the, once the box is opened up, you're greeted with the instructions and decals. We already reviewed those already. Then, it was a big old baggie full of parts. That wingspan, that Dornier, is probably 17, 18 inches. About the same size as that is my B-25. Donier was a... This was a good bomber. They actually used them for reconnaissance work. They used them during the Blitz. 
and uh, the 214 was the, was the beginning was uh, the beginning stepping stepping stone of the Dornier 215. But this kit has recessed panels. It makes washes excellent, especially with pen washing. And uh, the details of this kit for a kit that's made in Ukraine. It's a superb kit. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give this kit an 8. Without a shadow of doubt. And the third part, they give you. Oh, how about that? Santa Claus. I can take him out now. On the plastic spurs, they got them in the baggies. There, people in the crane around the ball, buddy. They got their game on this one. They give you two different variants for the fuselage right there, folks. On the canopies right here, as you can see, you get two of them. I got a 30 caliber machine gun, probably fits here, and you got one fit there on the other side. And you got your under your underbelly, also your your greenhouse bombamers window. Your gondola windows here. They gave you two different gondola windows. Excellent kit. There's your wing, boys. Big. That's about 15 inches. 16, 17 inches at least. So Dunier is about the size of a B-25. A very nice airplane it is. Okay, fellas, that concludes two more for the stash pile. And uh, there's my stash right there. My stash behind me is 15 feet of models. 15 feet of models stacked 20 high. And right behind this stash here, I got another pile of stash. I got more models like this down my finished basement. So what I'm going to do is probably next week I'm going to get my cam cam uh, my my camcorder and walk around and give the, the cook's tour of everything I got. You guys be in for a treat for this. You'd be surprised what I have. I got nothing but a house. It's, it's, it's turned into a museum. And uh, it's my life's work. Okay, gang. That completes the uh, the unbox review of both kits. And uh, and I'm going to have fun with that. I don't know where that cigar went to. Yeah, I'll find it in a minute. And uh, that'll be that. Okay, fellas, uh, it's time for me to sign up right here. I've been here long enough, and uh, I'm kind of tired a little bit. And I uh, still could kick, kick my ass. I'm tired. i hit the parts sack and go to sleep. And tomorrow I'll finish it up. I'll make a video of that. And I'll have another video of Chancellor of North Wales. Uh, flying boat group build featuring my PBM Mariner. And uh, that'll be that. And uh, okay, fellas, uh, that'll be it. Frankie Day signing off. And we'll catch you on the next YouTube presentation. And may God bless every one of you guys out there. Thank you very much for the participants that that I attended in my uh, group build I have. Happy man I am. And I'm uh, very happy to share my stuff with you guys. And. Uh, May God bless. We'll catch you on the next video, boys. We'll see you later, man. Take care, guys.